Now this is my DJI frame, uh, my 550 frame with the, I have the Hoverfly Pro on it. And I really like, after making my first quadcopter, um, this is a hexcopter. And I really like the gap in between the frame right here to get down inside and uh, work on stuff. And I like the idea of not having that bubble on the top with all the workings in it. I like putting the batteries up on top. So this is um, one of the ideas that I'm, I'm using right here to build the, the giant hexcopter. I want to take the same uh, engineering stuff and put it into the big big one I have. Now the big ones, they don't usually fly along and they're super heavy. Um, that's why we're just making it for a movie prop. It probably won't be able to fly much more than um, five, may, maybe uh, six minutes at the most and most likely it's only going to be able to fly for four minutes. Unlike this where it can fly for around uh, 10 to 12 minutes. Now that I've got my inserts cut, I'm going to take each insert and pound it in. They're a little bit snug and I'm going to pound them into the, uh, the booms to give them more strength and uh, make it so they're more rigid. Now here's the uh, metal stock that I'm going to be using for the motor mount for the uh, 30G 5055. Now I did um, put my metal um, disc cutting abrasive um, blade on here and I'm going to start slicing the, uh, the piece of metal stock now. that looks like now that it's cut. Now I have to um, make my template and start getting ready to drill the uh, holes that are in the bottom of the 50-55 um, the um, turnigy motor. Now I made my template and I can start poking my holes for the motor mount. Now here's how the motor mounts came out. Um, they're not separated yet but just so you can see them. Now that's how it looks with a thrust bushing on the bottom. You can see I can wiggle it around. You can see the holes right through. I'm starting on putting the holes in the base plate for the uh, giant hexcopter. And I put together a quick little uh, template here so I can drill my holes all the way around the, the hex for the support and uh, anchoring of the booms. And once I drill the holes, um, I'm going to move this from each one of the, the boom points where it connects and poke my holes through and then once I have the hole set on the lower plate then I'm going to take and go to the upper plate and lay the, um, the, the bottom down on top of the center plate and then poke my holes through um, with a drill bit for the upper plate so they match up and line up all the way around so I'm going to do that next. Now that I have my holes all matched in for my bottom plate, I've got it clamped down to the top plate, as you can see. Um, and now I'm going to go around and drill out the, um, the top plate 
so the holes match all the way around for the booms to uh, fasten onto. So I'm going to do that next. Anytime you're using diamond plate, aluminum, it comes with a problem. So if I take and leave it the way it is right now, and I bolt and connect my booms and tighten everything down, I've got these diamond plates that will kind of kink and tilt the bolt or whatever I fasten these down with. So the next step I'm going to do is shave this little diamond plate down in the area where the washer and the fastener is going to go through both sides of our, uh, our base plate and our top plate. And I'm going to use uh, a Forstner bit and that's going to be my next step. Now here's the Forstner bit I use um, to, to machine and mill off the, the top of the diamond plate. Now the Forstner bit has a little guide that's on the side here that keeps it going in a circle, a perfect circle, when you're um, cutting through the wood or whatever. Um, now I took and shaved this down so it's not digging in the aluminum causing a, an outer edge groove to stop splintering. I don't need to worry about that. But I left the little cutter open and exposed so when this thing's twirling I left my holes small. They're only about an eighth of an inch thick or the diameter on the drill. So this will cut down and centering it and it'll shave the little bits of diamond plate away so it's nice and milled down so the washer will go in and set down just about perfectly smooth. It doesn't make it flawless, but it does help to do this anytime you're working with diamond plate. will sit down nice and flush right through the uh, diamond plate as you can see there uh, that's what it looks like when they've been milled down a little bit now this is the way the motor mount came out um, all six of these are going to be uh, mounted on the, the booms on the copter I had to custom build these so sometimes we run into problems with uh, mounting them in now I've got the holes in the bottom are, these are six, six millimeter um, screws that go in here and they're, I'm going to screw these down in here. Now anytime we do anything custom, we want to make sure that they're not going too deep into the um, motor housing when we fasten this thing on. And if we, if they're, these are custom screws so I have to trim them a little bit and feed these down through here as we can see they're a little bit if I run them down through they'll bump into the wires going into the uh, the coils and the armature inside on the motor and we all know what happens um, if it has a short it basically you plug the battery and it looks like you have a firework I put in a, a, a washer here and I'm gonna take my grinder and cut the tip off now this little bit sticking out is the amount that's poking up into the wire so I'm going to take my grinder and grind it right down to this um, six millimeter nut and that'll make it so it threads right up into the motor once I remove this um, fender washer right here and it'll go right up into the through the um, our motor mount and go right up into the motor it'll give us exactly enough thread to get a good um, nice fasten without having to poke the, the uh, screw up into the wires. But I'm going to take that six millimeter nut and thread it back down on here 
and then I'm going to go over this with a wire brush and clean this up so it threads right into the motor easily um, before I finish with the whole project. Now I have a whole bunch of these to do so it's going to take me a while to get these um, each one of these cleaned up and ready to mount in for our motor mount. Once that's done I'm going to spray paint the, the actual bracket. I've got six of these I have to paint and then I'm going to let them dry out and we'll start putting uh, after that, I'm going to start putting at least the frame together for the copter. Now, so far, this is the way the boom came out, and uh, that's how I have it mounted. Um, I took my metal bracket and I rounded the corners to trim off some of the excess weight. Um, I had to spend a lot of time and get the, uh, the fasteners, the screws that hold the motor onto the, this plate. This um, so they don't go up inside and bump into the wire leads coming in from the motor so I don't know if you can see that it's it's I'll try and turn it sideways see if you can see down inside there but I've got them nice and they're just perfect going up inside the motor and they stop before they reach the wires it took me a couple days to cut these and and make sure the threads were cleaned up on the ends now for the spacers I took uh, some oak and I planed it with my planer and then I took a hole saw and cut these uh, plugs out and I put them and I use them right here it's to help um, just lift this up a little bit now in between in between the plug and the metal frame here I have a piece of rubber this is uh, rubber neoprene and that will help um, dampen a little bit of the uh, shaking if it goes into a shake now at the the other end of the boom I have I, I made extensions in the uh, so this elevates and spreads apart the frame so I can get up inside there um, and, and undo wires once in a while or, or make connections and stuff like that and now I have six of these cut and I only have this one on for a sample right now I'm going to start putting these in now that they're in, I have to drill through and make sure they're lined up with the, the top and the bottom plate. Okay, this is the final day. I'm done with the frame. I got pretty much assembled uh, the way I like it. Um, so this is the bottom side right here. And I'll turn it, see if I can turn it around and show you the... Now this is the top where it houses the batteries. So you can see it. Um, I'm going to set it down here so you guys can see inside the frame. It's nice and straight. It came out pretty good. I'm real happy with it so far. It's much more rigid than I thought it would be. And, but I don't know yet. It hasn't flown uh, right now just on the ground. It's more, more rigid than any of the, the ones I've ever built so far. Well, I'm just about out of time as usual again. Uh, at least we got the frame assembled and I've got the motor mounts and everything all fastened in. Uh, the frame seems to be pretty rigid um, on the giant hexcopter. Um, you can see uh, the, I've got a couple DJI frames here in comparison to the size of the, the one I'm building. Um, now in the next episode I'm going to be uh, building the um, and fabricating up the power distribution center and connecting the 80 amp ESCs. So, till next time, this is 31 Pockets, and thanks for watching.